Today is World AIDS Day. According to the World Health Organization, more than 37 million people around the globe are living with HIV. Here in the United States, that number is about 1.3 million. Joining us now is Dr. Brad Hare, the HIV Clinical Director with Kaiser Permanente in San Francisco. Dr. Hare, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Obviously, over the last couple of years now almost COVID-19. It's been the forefront of conversation, but that doesn't necessarily mean illnesses like HIV AIDS are being forgotten. I know that lots of research is still going on. Talk to me about uh, any recent developments in research. Yeah, well, thank you, Noel. Yeah, you're right. I think this is a, you know, we've, we've been consumed by the COVID epidemic for the last couple of years, but uh, in other areas like HIV, there's still a lot of breakthroughs happening. Um, you know, HIV has now been recognized as a disease for 40 years. This is the 40th anniversary of our recognition of the first cases of HIV, and the Bay Area has been especially impacted hard. Um, where we are today is so different from where we were even just 10 years ago due to a lot of research breakthroughs, uh, mainly those breakthroughs in two areas, in the area of, of treatment for people living with HIV and the areas of prevention for people who are at risk but, uh, but HIV negative. And we now have great treatments for people. People with HIV who uh, are diagnosed today, I, you know, I, I get the opportunity to tell them they're gonna plan, you know, they need to plan to live long lives. Mm. HIV is not a death sentence. We expect people to live uh, normal life expectancies with HIV and plan accordingly. And that's due to the research breakthroughs that we're seeing with, with better, safer, more convenient treatments. Can you expand a little bit on, on some of those treatments or one of the main treatments? I know um, PrEP is one of the ones that we tend to see um, commercials and, and, and things like that for. Uh, talk to me a little bit about those treatments yeah. available. Yeah, PrEP is, PrEP is a really important uh, breakthrough. PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. So that means for people who are HIV negative but exposed to HIV, they're able to take a medication uh, once a day or sometimes um, just uh, episodically when they when they may be exposed. And it's very, very effective at preventing them from becoming infected. Uh, some of the, the research breakthroughs that we're uh, seeing now is making those kind of treatments uh, even more accessible and more convenient. Uh, we're seeing uh, movements toward simplified regimens, one pill once a day for treatment. That's been the standard for some time. And we're now seeing uh, research developments in longer acting uh, HIV treatments and longer acting prevention treatments like PrEP, which may be uh, injections that are available once a month, once every two months, and eventually once every six months. Mm -hmm. Those are not here yet. Uh, some of them are, some of them are not, some of them are on the way, but uh, you know, medical research continues into areas like HIV and AIDS treatment to make uh, prevention more accessible and to make the lives of people living with HIV um, easier. Talk to me just a little bit about how the science that we've been using towards trying to combat COVID-19 and mRNA vaccines, has that had any sort of impact on HIV research and, and what might become available or what might be possible when it comes to potentially maybe a vaccine for HIV? Yeah, that's a great question. I think what you're really getting at is areas of science that inform one another. And you know, in medical research, we learn a lot uh, about managing one disease from understanding other diseases. Um, and in particular, the area of mRNA technology, which is something that's really come to the forefront in the last year or two with COVID, is a technology that's uh, already been in development pre-COVID. It was a technology that, that has been around for vaccinations for other, other diseases, including HIV. There are mRNA vaccines that have been tested and are in development for many other diseases, including HIV. Uh, vaccines uh, for HIV, both for prevention and for treatment, um, have been, been elusive to researchers, but um, there's a lot of exciting research going on still very, very robust research programs in HIV prevention and importantly in HIV cure. So these areas, uh, as we learn more about one area, we definitely can apply that to, to other areas of biomedical and, and, and medical research. Definitely. Doctor, anything else you want just the general public to keep in mind on this World AIDS Day? 
Well, I think, you know, I look at World Age Day, it's, it's an opportunity for us to reflect. I think we've come a long way. Um, and I think it's an opportunity for us to think about those in our communities and our lives who've been impacted uh, by HIV and AIDS and to honor the memory and the legacy of people who live so courageously by, by keeping their memories uh, you know, in our hearts and by using their, uh, their lives as motivation to continue to make the lives better for people at risk for HIV or living with HIV. Definitely. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Do want to mention again, there is an event in Golden Gate Park today at 430 honoring uh, lives lost due to HIV. And um, just it's definitely something important for all of us to keep at the forefront of our minds. Doctor, thank you. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you.